Hello guys and girls, it's I, Aaron Halo 18 here, and I'm doing a video today called Christian Vlog, uh, part 20, and, and the first one will be devotional, Psalm 0 13, verse 6 through 12, Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through 19, Job 11, 12, 13, and 14. And the first part says devotional. Uh, you are loved. Shane Taylor was considered one of the most dangerous men in the UK prison system. Originally jailed for attempted murder. He had his sentence extended by four years when he attacked a prison officer with a broken glass, setting off a setting off a riot. He was put in a segregation uh, unit inside a maximum security prison. He was given his uh, food through a hatch. The door was not opened unless there were six officers armed with riot shields waiting uh, outside. Later, he was transferred to Long Lantern at maximum security prison where he was invited on Alpha. During the course he prayed, Jesus Christ, I know you died on a cross for me. I hate who I am, who I have become. Please forgive me and come into my life. At that moment he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Everything changed overnight. He said, I knew God existed. I knew Jesus. I touched me and I was going to live for him forever. His behavior changed so much that he went running a total segregation to it, getting a trusted job in in the prison chaplaincy. While well, uh, still in prison, he started sending money to a charity in Africa. He prayed for for the prison officers and for his enemies. And when he came out of prison, he got. Involved in a church, in a church. He made a he made a girl named, named uh, called Sam, who had also had a, had a tough life and had been involved with drugs and criminal activity. She also came to faith in Jesus. Now they are married and have four children. Talking to Shane now, and it's hard to imagine that he is the same person who terrified so many people in the past. He has experienced. The wonder of God's great love, Psalm 17, verse 7. He says, Jesus has shown me how to love and how to forgive. He has saved me. He has forgiven me for what I have done. He has turned my life around. Psalm 17, verse 6 through 12. One, know that you are loved and treasured by God. God's love for you is so great because it is so intimate. David calls on God and asks him to show the wonder of your great love. Verse 7. He prays, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Verse 8. Uh, um, I'm wrong. Verse 8. eight. The apple of the eye is the, is the people of the opening of the iris. And the eye through which light passes to reach that retina. The thing most treasured. This is a remarkable picture of God's wonderful love for you. Then he prays, Hide me in the shadow of your wait, verse 8b again. It tells of God's love and intimacy and protection. Jesus picked up this image as he looked over the people of Jerusalem in the days leading up to his crucifixion and longed for them to come and hide under his wings. Matthew chapter 23 verse 37. David is surrounded by enemies. Psalm 17, verse 9. You will call, call his hearts to speak arrogantly against them. There may be times in your life when you're going to face enemies, but whatever your struggles are differently, you may face, you can rely on God's intimate love for you. Lord, I call on you today. 
in the ear and hear my prayer, show the wonder of your great love, and keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. And amen to that, guys and girls. Uh, and uh, Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through 19. Two, experience God's love, generosity, and grace. Jesus tells a parable that uh, demonstrates again the wonder of his great love. The parable of the workers and vineyard shows the extraordinary generosity and grace of God who gives to those who enter. The kingdom lasts the same blessings that he gives to everybody else. This sometimes makes us in envious. Verse 15b, we are happy with our situation until we hear of someone that's doing even better. Then we are tempted to envy them. The landowner in this parable overturns all the normal commercial practices. He does this not to make extra profit for himself, but for the very opposite reason. He wants to be generous and pay more than justice demands. Kind of like the landowner and his blessings and forgiveness are always more than we could ever de deserve. You sometimes hear testimonies from people like Shane, Taylor, who have lived terrible lives. And then at the eleventh hour, verse nine, they repent and believe in Jesus. They are totally forgiven and receive all the benefits of Jesus, uh, Jesus' death and resurrection. Verse nineteen. Some people complain that this is unfair or that, like those, or that, those like Shane are given too high a prop for prop. Yet God uses their testimonies greatly often seemingly more than those who have borne the heat of the day. Verse 12b As we saw yesterday, God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom. So the, so the last will be first. And the first will be last. Verse 16. Jesus is saying that this is not a reason to be envious. Rather it is a reason to marvel at the generosity of God. In, the, in his great love he is generous to all. It is all grace. It is all undeserved. It is all a result of what Jesus foretold. Verses 17 through 20. The, the reality is that it is not just other people like Shane to whom God is generous. He is generous to me and to you. If God gave us only what we earned, we would be far worse off. And if you accept the generosity that God showed, charge on you, the result is staggering. Uh, through his death and resurrection, verses 19, I mean, I mean uh, 18 through 19, Jesus makes it possible for you to, for you and me to be forgiven and, and to enjoy his great love into eternity. Lord, thank you for your extraordinary generosity to me. May I never be envious of those who seem to be blessing even more than me. Thank you that I can know that I am loved now and in, in, into eternity. And uh, amen to that too, uh, guys and girls. And Job chapter 11 verse 1 through chapter 14 verse 22. 3. Hold on to his, on to his wonderful love through the difficult days. Job in the middle of a long period of intense suffering. Holds on to God's wonderful love. He says, Though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. Chapter 13, verse 15. Although Job had lived a blameless and upright life, fearing God and shunning evil, chapter 1, he was not perfect. He speaks here of the signs of my youth. Chapter 13, verse 26, it says, my offenses will be sealed up in a bag. You will cover over my sin. Chapter 14, verse 17. The mistake that Job's friends made was to think that his suffering was linked to his sin. In this passage, we see Job's increasing frustration with his friends. They go on about sin. Chapter 11, verse 6, verse 14. And effectively heap condemnation on Job. Verse 15. They, they talk in platitudes. 
and do not, do not offer any real comfort. Eventually, Job turns around and replies, But I have a mind as well as you, and am not inferior to you, and does not know all these things. Turn to verse 3, What you know, I also know. Chapter 13, verse 2, he points out to them that their best policy would be to be, would be to say nothing. And only he would uh, be altogether silent. For you, that would be wisdom, verse 55. We need such wisdom when people are suffering. It's not to speak in glib latitudes, but to ensure so we demonstrate God's wonderful love by our actions. And are very careful in what we say. Job has a far healthier attitude than his friends. In his intense suffering, he experiences that awful feeling of aloneness and cries out to, to God, Why do you hide your face? Verse 24. Ever see as Lewis's wife died, he wrote a book called A Grief Observed. In the, in the book, he likens the kind of experience to a door slammed in your face. Yet, in the midst of all this, Job was able to say to God, even if he killed me, I'd keep on hoping. Verse 15. The message. He knows God, he knows God and trusts him enough, even in the very depth of despair. Know and trust that the length of your life is ultimately determined by God and that the number of your mouths is only in God's control, and that no one can pass the bounds, bounds of his allotted time. Chapter 14, verse 5, AMP. At the same time, Job seems to get a glimpse of life beyond the grave. Nothing, not even death, can separate you from God's great love. If we humans die, we will live again. That's my question. All through these difficult days, I keep hoping. Waiting for the final change. For resurrection. Verse 14, the message. See also, chapter 19, verse 25 through... Uh, uh, verse 25 onwards. You and I are so much better off than Joe because we know about the cross and resurrection of Jesus. And we have the sure hope of eternity in the presence of God, wondering at his great love forever. As the story of Job unfolds, we see that he is right to keep trusting in God. God never explains to Job why he allowed him to go through so much. So Job's confidence in God's love is vindicated in the midst of suffering. Somehow we have to hold on to the wonders of God's great love, Psalm chapter 17, verse uh, 7. Lord, thank you that although there is so much that I do not understand in this world, I can trust in your wonderful love. Help me today and every day to continue to wonder at your great love for me. And also amen to that, God and girls, too. Uh, and then adds, Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. I have taken this verse out of context many times. When the children were young and lost, running races, or didn't go well in the exam or competition, I would recite, the first shall be last, and the last first. It was a sort of joke, but also a reminder that when we value life, success, achievement, getting to the top, will not be valued in the same way in the in the kingdom of heaven. In the shadow, at uh, Psalm 17, verse, uh, um, Psalm 17, is the, in the shadow of your wings, 
a prayer of David. Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From your presence let my vindication come. That your eyes uh, behold upright. You have tried my heart. You have visited me by night. You have tested me, and you will find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth will not transgress. In regard to the works of man, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. Otherwise, and avoid the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me. O oh God, incline your ear to me. To hear my words, wonderfully show your steadfast love. O oh, Savior of those who seek refuge, for there are advisories at your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. For the wicked who do not who do me violence. I tell the enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arro arrogantly. They have now surrounded our steps. They set their eyes to cast us to the ground. He is like a lion eager to tear. As a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord. Confront him, subdue him. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword. From men by your hand, O Lord. From men of the world whose portion is in this life. He filled their womb with treasure. They are satisfied with children. They have their abundance to their infants. As, sh as, as for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Matthew 20, uh, ESV, laborers in the vineyard, where the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And coming out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And then he said, you go into the vineyard uh, too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour. He did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when you when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his torment, call the laborers and pay them to their wages. Beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired for first came they thought they would receive more the denarius is like money. Their money, uh system money back then. I don't know those days, I guess. Uh, now when those hired first came, they they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius, and on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, these last worked only one, one hour. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. And you replied to one, to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. You do not agree with me for theirs. Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give, this, give to this last one as I give to you. 
but I am not allowed to do what I choose or what belongs to me. Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. Jesus foretells his death a third time. And as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside. And on the way he said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests as scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And he will be raised on the third day. A mother's request. And then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons and kneeling before him, she asked him or something, and, and he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Say that these two sons of mine are to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? And said to them, We are able. He said to them, said to them you will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not my to grant, but it is for those who for whom it has been prepared by my father. And when they when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers, but Jesus called them to and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it uh, the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came. Give us a try. Try. Give us it. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus heals two blind men. And they went out of Jericho. A great crowd followed him. You know, there were two blind men sitting on the roadside. More. Are you recording? More, yes. Okay. Not more. Yeah, Not more, right? A little harder? A little harder? Harder, right? Harder. More. Yeah. It's pushing right, my head back. I'm pushing more, right? It's harder, right? Harder. You gotta push me all the way hard. That's good. And forward, right? They went out of Jericho, a great crowd followed him. And behold, there were two blind men sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us. Son of David, the crowd rebuked them. Some of them to be silent, but they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, Son of David. And stopping, Jesus called them and said, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. And Jesus in pity touched their eyes and immediately they recovered their sight. And immediately they recovered their sight and followed him. Job chapter 11 Zavar speaks you deserve worse then Zavar the Nevite answered and said should a multitude of words go unanswered and a man full of talk be judged right should you babble silence men and when you mock shall no one shame you when you say my doctrine is pure 
I am clean in God's eyes. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips to you. And that he would tell you the secrets of wisdom. For he is manifold in understanding. Know then that God exalts you less than your guilt deserves. Can you find out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limit of the Almighty? Is it higher than heaven? What can you do? Deeper than show? What can you know? Its, it's, measure, is no, it's measure is longer than the earth and more than the sea. If he passes through and imprisons and got to wait here. And more than the sea. If he passes through and imprisons and summons the court, who can turn him back? For he knows worthless men. When he sees iniquity, will he not consider it? When a stupid man will get understanding, it's when a wild donkey's cult is born and mad. Amen. If you prepare your heart, Will you stretch out your hands toward him? If iniquity is in your hand, put it far away and, no, and let no injustice dwell in your, te in your tents. Surely then you will lift up your face without permission. You will be secure and will not fear. You will forget your misery. You will remember it as waters that have passed away. And your life will be brighter than the, the noon day. Its darkness will be like the morning. And you will feel secure. Because there is hope. You will look around and take your rest. In security. You will lie down. And none will make you afraid. Many will court your favor. And this is uh, Job 11. The ESV version. Uh, 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 19 again. It says, You will lie down and none will make you afraid. Many will court you, court your favor. But the eyes of the wicked will fall, will fail with All way of escape will be lost to them. And their hope is the breath, is the breathe, breath their last. Job replies, The Lord has done this. Verse 1, uh, Job 12. Is the, uh, then Job answered and said, No doubt, you are the people, and wisdom will die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know such things as these? Am I a laughing stock to my friends? I who called to God, and he answered me. A just and blameless man. Am, am a laughing stock in the thought of one who is at ease, there is contempt for misfortune. It is ready for those whose feet slip. The tents of robbers are at peace. And those who provoke God are secure. Who bring their God in their hand. But ask the beast they will teach you to burn the heavens and they will tell you or the bushes of the earth they will teach you and the fish of the sea will declare to you who among all, those, all these do not know the hand and the Lord has done this and his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all of all mankind. Does he not, does not the ear test words as the palate tastes food? Wisdom is with the aged and understanding in length of days. Of God our wisdom and might. He has console and understanding. If he tears down, none can rebuild. If he shuts a man in, none can open. If he withholds the waters, they dry up. If he sends them out, they overwhelm the land. 
with him are strength and sound wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leads the elders away stripped and stripped and judged and judges he makes fools. He loses the bonds of kings and binds of waste froth on their hips. He leads priests away stripped and overthrows the mighty. He deprives of speech those who are trusted and takes away the discernment of the elders. He pours contempt on princes and loses the belt of the strong. He uncovers the deeps out of darkness and brings deep darkness to light. He makes nations great and he destroys them. He enlarges nations and leads them away. He takes away understanding from the chiefs and the people of the earth. and makes them wander in, in a trackless it makes them a makes them wander in a trackless waste. They group in the dark without light. And he makes them stagger like a drunken man. Job chapter thirteen. Uh, ESV Verse 1, Job continues still, I hope, uh, Job continues still, I will hope in God. Behold, my eye has seen all, all of this. My ear has heard and understood it. Well, you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you. But I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to argue my case with God. As for you, you... You whitewash with lies. Worthless physicians are you all. Know oh, that you would keep silent. And it would be your wisdom. Hear now my argument and listen to my pleadings on my lips. Will you speak falsely for God and speak deceitfully for Him? Will you show partiality toward Him? Will you plead the case for God? Will it be well with you when he searches out you out? Or can you deceive him as one deceives a man? He will surely rebuke you. If in secret you show partiality, will, you, will not his majesty terrify you? And the dread of him fall upon you? Your election are proverbs of ashes. Your defenses are defenses of clay. Let me have silence and I will speak. And let come on me what you may. What may. Why should I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? Though he slay me, I, I, I will hope in him. I will hope in him. Then I will argue my ways to his face. This will be my salvation that the godless uh, shall not come before him. Keep listening to my words, and let my declaration be in your ears. You know, I have prepared my case. I know that I shall be in the right. In the right. Who, who is there who will contend with me? Well, but then I would be silent and die. Only grant me two things. Two things. Then I will not hide myself from your face. Or withdraw your hand far more, far from me. I meant. And let not dread of your ter of you terrify me. To call and I will answer. Or let me speak. And you reply to me. How many are my iniquities and my sins? Make me know my transgressions and my sin. Why do you hide your face and count me as your enemy? Will you frighten a dry, driven leaf and pursue dry chaff? For you write bitter things against me and make me inherit the iniquities of my youth. You put my feet in the stocks and watch all my path, all my paths. I mean, you set a limit for the soles of my feet. 
man wastes away like a rotten thing. Like a garment that is like a garment that is moth uh, eaten. And that's it for Job 13. Uh, last one is Job 14. Uh, uh, Job chapter 14, the ESV version, at verse 1. Job continues, death comes soon to all. Man who is born of a woman is a is few de is few of days and full of trouble. He comes out like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. And you and do you open your eyes to such a one and bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an uh, unclean? There is not uh, one since his days are determined, so the number of his months is with you. And you have appointed his limits that he cannot pass. Look away from him and leave him alone, that he may enjoy like a hired hand his day. For there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will, that it will sprout again, and that it shoots will not cease. Though its root grow old in the earth, and its stump die in the soil, yet at the scent of water it will, it will cut and put out branches like a young plant. But a man dies and is laid low, and breath is last. Where is he? As waters fail from a lake, and a river wastes away and drives and dries up. So a man lies down and rises not again. Let the heavens are no more he will not awake or be roused out of his sheep out of his up sleep. So that that you would hide me and show that you would conceal me until your wrath be passed. That you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall you live again? All the days of my service, I would wait till they, till my renewal should come. You would call, and I would answer you. You would long for the work of your hands, but then you would you would number my steps. You would not keep watch over my sin. My transgression would be sealed up in a bag. And you would cover over my iniquity. But the mountain falls and crumbles away. And the rock is removed from its place. The waters wear away to the best towns. The torrents wash away the soils of the earth. So you destroy the hope of man. You reveal forever against him and he passes. So you change his countenance. And he send him away. His sons come to honor and he does not know it. They are brought low and he perceives it not. He feels only the pain of his own body and he mourns only for himself. That's it for Oh, uh, this uh, page, I guess, day 29. Or, I think that's good for now, uh, I guess. And, uh, and the Job is a pretty good book. Uh, we really should have faith like Job. I mean, of all things he went through, he still worshipped God and followed him and loved him and even me I, I should not be angry with others I should be more calmer please pray, pray for me to stop reviving shows so many times uh, and pray for me to get along with my father and for salvation for him and for us to have a rest, good rest of the day everything will go well always pray uh, for me guys uh, and girls out there on YouTube 
uh, I need lots of prayer. It's, it's good to pray and and and, and worship it. Uh, I usually listen to worship music uh, before bed every night, and hopefully my dad will be watching TV shows with me in the future again. Uh, I guess, and uh, I hope he does, and I hope I don't drive him crazy with rewinding, rewinding it too much and stuff like that. And uh, I'm so glad that I still have faith in God and in Jesus, and at least for Please pray for me to never denounce the faith or any of that. And I always pray for everything in my life uh, that I asked for before, and for the girlfriend uh, thing as well. And all my New Year's resolutions and whatever I prayers I need, and for God's will to be done for my life and things of that nature and, and stuff like that. And I really do need more faith uh, these days and patience with others and. In stay focused and not drift off and think about other things or worry about other things. Just enjoy life and be happy and the things that I do in my life. And give my parents patience with me too. We're just not argue or get along. Apples to not argue or get along. I don't know. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to make a video for you and. We want to worship you and honor you today, Lord. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. And thank you for the people you've given us, and you've given to us in our lives, uh, Lord. And I'm sorry for our struggles and pains and angers and whatever difficulties we have throughout the weeks and struggles. And forgive us, Lord. I just want to have mercy on us, too. Sorry for our terrible sins. And, and that's all, all my prayer requests that I've always prayed for it's over the years, uh, Lord, and, and, and for your will to be done, for me to have a girlfriend, and for you and your relationship to be a better Christian person, and being nicer to my parents and uh, my ever everyone I know, anyone out, out in the world, and let me be, be careful it's on Facebook and everywhere I go. And, for the weather to be better for me to get out there in the community start going to um, churches and visiting people and going to Monday night tanks and for the weather to be better for me to get out there in the community and things like of that nature just answer all, all of my prayers and uh, in your holy name we pray Lord Jesus uh, Amen and uh, yeah I'm glad I prayed in this video so, I, I gotta go now. Uh, have a nice day, and God bless you. And as always, please rate, comment, like, favorite, subscribe, views, thoughts, and opinions. And I hope you liked it and enjoyed it for your good pleasure. You guys and girls, and Ghost Robo's favorite quote is Please drink some hot chocolate, and I'll see you all later. And this is Aaron Halo 18 signing off. And God bless you, and have a good day. And goodbye.